G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday afternoon here in Australia, Wednesday evening over in the stateside time. A little bit of movement in the market, not really a whole lot, says it's up 0.5%. I think this was about 1.47 yesterday, so it says it's kind of down a bit from there. But anyway, they're saying up 0.15%. But again, really Bitcoin, it's still just kind of hovering around that kind of range it's been for a long time. So, you know, things are looking positive at the moment, but we already have another weekend coming up. And traditionally we've been seeing, you know, we've been seeing, sorry, weekend retracements happening. So does that mean Bitcoin all of a sudden drops back down to, you know, who knows what, maybe 30,000 and then altcoins get wrecked again? Yeah. I guess that's what we'll just have to wait and see. All right, but anyway, having a look at the market cap, so 1.468 trillion, still not quite 1.5 trillion, but you know, thereabouts. Bitcoin dominance is dropping, so it means everyone's getting a bit bullish on the altcoins again. Now, again, this is what kind of has me worried. And again, I never offer financial advice and I'm never gonna tell you what to do. But again, I've said this before, I would just be very careful getting into the altcoins at the moment. It could be the best decision. Look, maybe the market is getting ready to just pop and go absolutely spastic. And that would be awesome because it's going to you know, drive these altcoin prices way higher. But if it goes the other way and everyone's thinking this is Wyckoff accumulation and hopefully you know, the charts and everybody is right. But if it's not and this is you know, the big players about to pull a swifty and dump it down even lower all these altcoins are just going to get wrecked and again it generally that kind of stuff happens when too many people are trying to long and short the market and that's what a lot of people are trying to do at the moment so yeah hence why i've never done any leverage trading and i don't know if i ever will because it just seems yeah too risky but hey look there's people out there that make uh, a lot of money off um leverage trading but unfortunately you know new retail people get in and they just get completely and utterly wrecked that's generally what happens all right eth dominance 17.6 percent so growing i mean eth was looking pretty good here at the moment it got down to i think it's nearly 1700 1780 or 1800 something like that and now it's back uh to 2200 so looking pretty bullish and we can see there by the signs of things it's looking good but we are now in July and we know that we have uh, EIP uh, 1559 coming out sometime this month. So maybe that have so has something to do with it. And gas prices around about 16. So they were about eight. So they have kind of doubled. And I would say that's probably because people are jumping out of stable coins and getting into a lot of the altcoins at the moment. Everyone's getting pretty bullish on those. Hopefully, you know, uh, people who are doing that are proven right. And look, again, I've bought some altcoins of late, not too much, really more focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum because I am worried that, again, this is going to, you know, turn around and go the other way. And it's just hard to know. But anyway, let's move on. We're not going to focus on sort of doom and gloom stuff. All right, Bitcoin, 34,000, nice. And again, Ethereum traveling quite nicely. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? Because we can see it's a pretty much a sea of green at the moment. Hence why a lot of people are thinking we've probably found the bottom. And I'm, I'm leaning more towards that we have, but I'm not ruling out that we haven't. Whoo, XDC network, nice. Uh, jumped up 20% in 24 hours. Maker, Compound, Terra, Engine, oh, Decentraland, Telcoin. Look, a number of really good gains there. Really, 15% above in 24 hours is what I call a really good gain. And under that is just what I would call a standard gain in 24 hours. But, you know, <laughs> that's cryptocurrencies. You go anywhere else and that'd be like 15% gain. That's, you know, outstanding. Cryptocurrencies, yeah. I mean, that's just a, that's just a Thursday. <laughs> so look, some really good gains and engine. I'm glad that's starting to make another move again, uh, a project I really, really like. And it does seem like the NFT kind of space could be getting ready to heat up and we're going to have a look at some stories that, you know, might kind of uh, lean towards that as well. So look, gains pretty good. What about losses? What hasn't fared so well in the last 24 hours? Hardly anything really. Horizon down, Shiba Inu down. I mean, still up, you know, 25% in the last seven days. And then really we're, you know, starting to get into, you know, single digit losses like, you know, Filecoin and things like that. And then really we're going to start to move towards, you know, some of the, the stable coins. But losses, very, very minimal. Hardly anything. And gains, a couple of nice ones there. 
All right, as we always do, go over to the Bitcoin chart. And like I said, still just kind of ranging, you know, in this motion, uh, in this kind of range, nothing too crazy has happened. Again, we broke out above this. This was that Wyckoff distribution, and now everyone's saying this looks like the Wyckoff Wyckoff accumulation. Hopefully, they're right. I'm leaning towards them being right, but look, I've been wrong before, and yeah. You just got to be very careful in these markets. Again, long term, still super bullish on cryptocurrencies. Just in the kind of short term, not so sure at the moment. But, you know, it's that kind of thing, the risk to reward ratio. What is the risk of you getting in at the moment and being wrong that it goes down compared to what is the upside potential? And the upside potential is, you know, you could double your money. Uh, and the low side is, you know, you could definitely lose uh, more than sort of half your money at the moment. So you need to work that out for yourself. But for me, I'm happy to accumulate in this range. Uh, I'm happy to accumulate Bitcoin really almost all the time outside of when it's going into price discovery. When it's going into price discovery, I really, you know, a lot of the time in price discovery, I'm not really buying any Bitcoin. I'm really focusing on alts because that means we're in a bull market and things are going to get, you know, pretty sort of crazy. But in saying that, you know, Bitcoin's my preferred uh, out of all of them. But because it doesn't have the gains, uh, it does not make up the most of my portfolio at times. Initially it did. Uh, it made up, you know, nearly 50% of my portfolio. But now Ethereum's done so well, that's overtaken it. And, you know, a number of the other altcoins have done extremely well prior to this kind of dump and they took up a big percentage of that. But that has kind of leveled out now. I think at the moment, Bitcoin is making up around about 33 to 35% of my portfolio. Uh, and it's only because Ethereum's done so well that it has taken up so much. So that's the charts. Again, nothing sort of too crazy. We're still just ranging. So we haven't really had a determining factor either way, whether we're going to continue to go up or continue to go down. But what we could say is that we are still generally in a downward trend. We had that fake out. Oh God, we're on the four hour. Let's go to the daily. Didn't even see that. Still gonna show basically something fairly similar. I was wondering why my chart was looking a little bit weird. So still sort of ranging in here. Again, we had that fake out and that's what it was. And we come back and we've bounced off this. And now we've broken out again, but it does look like it's going to be a bit of a fake out at the moment. It's starting to pull down. And we have the weekend coming up, you know, again, Thursday here, Australia time, you know, Wednesday evening stateside time. Let's see what happens over the weekend, whether we can, you know, hold this line or we break back below it. All right, some really interesting stories. So Celsius, something that I've really wanted to get into, but there has been a little bit of controversy around it. So we're going to look at both sides. So what's good is Celsius users are set to receive yield from Celsius $200 million Bitcoin mining investment. So they are going to return some of those profits to their members, which is really, really good. And Celsius have got some uh, pretty good returns out there. So, you know, this is good for Celsius users but there has been some controversy that has happened with celsius and it's plagued them for a little while and so we go over to here so custodian prime trust cuts ties with crypto lender celsius so custodian prime trust has given cryptocurrency lending platform celsius network 30 days to get off its pl platform citing red flags Prime Trust confirmed it has terminated the contract with Celsius and after the notice period will turn off API access to its custodial platform but would not specify the reason. Now, we can go down here and there's a little bit more. So a, per a person familiar with the situation who did not want to be identified because of, sens because of the sensitivity of the matter said Prime's trust risk team was concerned about Celsius's strategy of endlessly rehypothecating assets. Now, what's rehypothecation? So it is a practice whereby banks and brokers use for their own purposes assets that have been posted as collateral by their clients. The reuse of collateral from one lending transaction to finance additional loans, creating a somewhat obscure and potentially dangerous type of financial derivative if abused. It's not the first time such allegations have been made about Celsius practices. Now, Celsius, a spokesperson from uh, excuse me, a Celsius spokesperson has come out and strenuously denied the rehypothecation claims. Now, what we need to remember is this is done by banks and brokers all the time. This isn't something new. 
and they did say that it can be potentially dangerous if abused. So are Celsius abusing that, you know, sort of method? I don't know, but it's a method that's been around for a lot of times. So at the moment, you need to work out, you know, do your do you want your money with Celsius? I don't have any money with Celsius, but I've wanted to for a while, and it's still something I probably will do. I just haven't got around to it. You know, there's lots of other things that happen in a day. Uh, I've been, you know, working not working with but I've had uh, my money with BlockFi for a long time and we're going to have a look at BlockFi in a moment but look so there's upsides and downsides to everything and it's going to be the same when we have a look at BlockFi all right next story as we were speaking over here like the gains let's go back to the gains you know Decentraland uh, and engine coin up there so you know NFTs and that whole kind of metaverse space and that seems like there's a bit of a boom coming back for it well here we can see an 18 year old trans artist has sold their life story in an NFT for $2.1 million. I mean, I'm not sure if this artist has been around, has any kind of, you know, real sort of following. Well, it says here, few Ocious de depicted his life from the age 14 to 18 through surrealist digital artwork. I'm guessing this artist probably does have uh, a bit of a following and, you know, can you call someone trans a he or a she or are they a they? I'm not sure how it all works these days. I'm a bit old school. But anyway, it seems like the NFT space, while it went quiet for a while, may not be completely done yet. And maybe you know the market's starting to peak up a bit. And this can be further followed on by Tim Berners. Hopefully I'm saying that. Tim Berners-Lee's web source code NFT sells for $5.43 million at Sotheby's. I think this is a great NFT. God, I would have loved to have bought this. I mean, I don't have $5.43 million, not even remotely close to that, but this is an NFT that I would have bought. So basically it was the code used to invent the internet. And I mean, that's where, you know, all this kind of cryptocurrency stuff stems from. I think this is going to be a great buy. Like whoever got that, congratulations. I think that is an NFT that will, oh, it'll be worth so much money in the future. The original code for the internet. And, you know, I'm sure Mr. Berner, Berners-Lees, yeah, Berners-Lees, that's one weird name, is going to be sitting pretty with the money. It'll be interesting to see what he did with that money. Like, has he converted that into a cryptocurrency or cash or, you know, a whole stack of other things? But again, I think this is an NFT I would love to own. I would have been all over this. If I had the money, I 100% would have bought that NFT for sure. I think that's a great NFT. But again, 5.43 million says to me that, you know, this whole NFT space is anywhere, you know, but done for in the sort of short term. I think long term NFTs are going to be absolutely amazing. But even in this current market, there's still an appetite for it. So very, very nice. All right, this one, <laughs> very interesting. So a US congressman calls for law allowing government to reverse cryptocurrency transactions. So I mean, I read through the article and I couldn't see anything where if that's even possible to do. So, and I understand where he's coming from. He was saying, you know, if, if there's nefarious transactions happening, it'd be good if, you know, regulators and that could get in there and, you know, reverse transactions and that. So number one, I don't think that's even possible. But number two, if it was possible, we'd have to be so careful with, you know, how that is regulated. Because that's the problem is we don't want people to be able to step in and say, no, we don't like that transaction. Sorry, we're not having it. If it is illegal, like outright illegal, absolutely, no worries with it. But we don't want to have a system where someone just says we don't like it. And that's what I get worried about. Oh no, like, you know, we just feel on a moral basis that's the wrong thing to do. Well, sorry, morals differ from person to person, state to state, country to country. So morally, no, we can't have that straight out illegal there's been a crime that's been committed sure I, i'm in favor of that but i just i don't know number one if that's possible and number two who do we trust to make the right decision because again all of a sudden your government says i oh, know we don't like something i.e crypto which they have been against for a long time and all of a sudden they're like no no you can't do that and they take away our right to you know spend our money our crypto whatever it is how we want to 
completely agree with the full-on illegal stuff where there's illegal transactions drugs and crime and all the rest of it yes but you know all of a sudden someone having the power to go look we just don't fundamentally agree with that what well, I don't fundamentally care what anyone agrees with really other than what I agree with if I'm not breaking any laws no one not the government not regulators not anyone should have the right to stop me from doing that again different story if it's illegal I'm 100% on board with that but if you know again we then have to trust somebody to be making those you know decisions on our behalf and that is what has me worried and again I'm just not even sure if that's possible at the moment but interesting that you know some guys calling for that all right coinbase so a few months after being listed on Nasdaq coinbase has received a license from Banfin to launch crypto custodial services in Germany the company is also going to launch a dapp store so this is what I see that exchanges they are going to be banks in the future that's literally the new bank and that's what a lot of you know the the old banks that we have they need to basically get on board with this sort of stuff or they will get left behind you know people talk about banks becoming null and void the banks that we have the old style banks the traditional banks you know old finance yeah they will they they're going to disappear very very quickly uh if they can you know come up with their own exchanges or you know buy heavily into exchanges then they will have half a chance but really that means their kind of banking disappears this is this is what i see the future and you know coinbase getting a you know a license to operate in germany and you know a financial license i think this is the way of the future i really do and again you know i spoke about ave the other day they have a uh, it's a European I'm pretty sure it's European I don't know if it's you know exactly England or what it is but they have a European financial license this is a platform that has the license it's not a bank this is something that everyone can access it's financially regulated and again I hope Ave is looking to do the same in many other parts of the world I'm pretty sure I reported again it's hard to remember everything you've ever read and reported on but I'm pretty sure they're also looking into uh, Asia parts of Asia get licenses over there so I think exchanges and you know again DeFi platforms and that they will be the new banks uh, in the not too distant future don't get me wrong it's not going to happen in five or ten years but I think 20 to 30 to 40 years time I think these old style banks that we have these days they're going to disappear unless they get on the front foot and again maybe start up their own exchanges and you know offer all these kind of products which they are doing slowly but surely getting on onto it like we saw that story the other day 650 banks are suddenly going to get you know the option to offer crypto services to other uh, banks and then those banks will then pass them on to uh, all their retail customers so very very interesting and you know again I don't think this will be the last sort of financial license that you'll see things like Coinbase and that get and that's where Binance needs to uh, sort of get uh, on board is they need to get regulated uh, and licensed because they will be literally you know one of the biggest bank not one of actually they will be the biggest bank in the world if they can get properly regulated and I know that was the reason that uh, Binance US hired uh, Brooks uh, to sort of be the CEO of Binance USA because he understands all that kind of stuff and that is the future that I see coming all right this one made me laugh good lord and I hope no one watching my video was part of this so the cryptocurrency space has seen another rug pull from a DeFi project that promised millions of percentages in return. Okay, I've spoke about this before and we'll just quickly go over it. This is why I don't just dive into the latest DeFi project. There's tons of them out there at the moment. It's ridiculous. I prefer to put my money in the ones that have been around for a little while uh, and have proven themselves. So we go here. And it was called Whale Farm. Launched earlier this month. Earlier this month, sorry. Whale Farm started with high promises for investors as it offered staking of numerous coins, including BNB, BUSD, USDT, BTC, ETH, ADA, DOT, and LINK, to earn up to, and here we go, 7,217,848% APY why would anyone think that was going to last and wasn't a rug pull is beyond me good lord 
that is part of the problem though is people keep hearing about these crazy gains that people make uh, in crypto and I would say a lot of this is new people because no one who's been in the crypto space for a while would have touched this they literally wouldn't have they would have known straight away you couldn't provide the daily percentage uptake on that let alone the yearly percentage uptake it was just never going to happen but again the people who aren't from crypto they hear about these crazy gains quickly come over to crypto and they see something like this and they're like this is how people made their millions in crypto they put ten dollars into this and in a year's time made seven million dollars or seventy million dollars or you know whatever it would have been and unfortunately get completely scammed and rug pulled and all the rest of it so yeah when it comes to DeFi. I basically stick with the ones that have been around for a while and again never financial advice my personal opinion synthetics Aave you know I haven't been in I'm not in compound I like compound though that's where I put my money I have dabbled in some other ones Carver got some Carver uh, what else is there out there Alpha Finance Terra Luna uh, Reef you know there's some other projects that I've put some money in but I haven't put that much money into them because they haven't been around long enough for me to get you know more bullish on them but yeah you're gonna see a ton more rug pulls from DeFi projects particularly if this whole market goes into another big bull run there's gonna be you know a number more a number of other DeFi projects that come out and what I worry about is that these newer DeFi rug pulls are from the same people who did ones earlier and just basically change the name and change the code a little bit uh, and you know walk away with millions more but my gut feeling is that eventually they are going to get caught up with uh, and yeah then they will face the long arm of the law but we'll have to wait and see all right so as we we're talking about Celsius before uh, and you know they're returning some you know some of their Bitcoin mining rewards to their members and they generally have pretty good return rates I've been dealing with BlockFi now upsides and downsides so here is the downside at the moment so BlockFi rate cut on Bitcoin deposits leave rivals scratching their heads so we go down here crypto lending pawn BlockFi is cutting interest rates on a number of crypto asset deposits just about three months after the company lowered rates in March so they have been coming down and particularly Bitcoin uh, interest rates have come down severely now BlockFi says its decision was made based on the changing market dynamics and borrowing demand from institutional investors so here we can see this is tier one so you can get four point sorry a four percent return on Bitcoin up to 0 0.25 so if you got more than 0 0.25 in your Bitcoin you're now earning 1.5 percent as opposed to 4% as long as it's not going above 5 and then it goes down to 0.25% so a quarter of a percent on Bitcoin 5 and above and you know I've seen a lot of the Twitter and, and I do understand it a little bit people are upset and saying you just keep reducing the rates you know and it's not even worth having it on there all right let's have a look at that if you just simply have it sitting on your ledger how much is it earning it's not earning anything now you can go chuck it on Celsius and they're providing you know better returns but what do we just look at Celsius has its own issues so that's what we need to be careful with you know as long as I'm making more than I could make in a bank and what we need to remember is you're making 4% on 0 0.25 of a Bitcoin and Bitcoin is you know going up 10 20 30 X at times and who knows what it's going to do over the future so while people are getting upset and I get it you know we used to be at 5% now it's down to 4% and it used to be 5% for up to I think two Bitcoin and so yes the rates are dropping but it's better than nothing and then you have to have a look at the competitors who are offering 7 million percent on all these coins and what happens you get rug pulled so BlockFi while they don't offer the best returns they're still offering returns and they've been around for a while and they have you know shown that they're probably no guarantees in life gonna be here for a lot longer because they don't offer such crazy returns that they simply can't keep up with that kind of stuff I get the feeling and again never financial advice like they're offering fairly legit rates and we need to remember they need to make some money they got big overheads they've got you know 
you know, people that have uh, invested in BlockFi, like properly invested in the company, not, you know, just put some coins in and get returns, they got to pay them, pay themselves, you know, and then divvy up that money to pay back to people who are investing with them. So, yeah, I'm. don't get me wrong, I would like the rates to be higher, but as long as I'm making some kind of return on something that would otherwise just sit there, I'm not too upset. Now, what we also need to remember is BlockFi are adding more coins. So they added Chainlink not that long ago. It used to be just Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, and then some stable coins and Paxos Gold. Literally just yesterday, or today actually, they've added BAT, Uni, and DAI. So BAT, I mean, I use the Brave browser, so other than the you know rewards I've got from there, I'm not really buying BAT. Uh, but hey, it, it's still there and you can get a return on it. DAI, again, it's basically just another stable coin, so it makes sense. But Uni, love this. So I have already put some Uni onto my BlockFi account to start earning some interest. Now, the Uni token is hopefully going to be able to be staked in the not too distant future and it's going to be uh, getting some of the rewards. Uh, from the fees that are on Uniswap. So that is something that I'll had, then have to look at later. But hey, again, if you have BAT or DAI or Uni, you can now get a return by putting it on BlockFi. So again, I'm never offering you financial advice, but there is a link down below. I like BlockFi. I've been dealing with them for a long time. And so as long as they're paying really kind of any kind of interest, I'm pretty much happy to have it with them. But don't get me wrong, if something comes out that has been around for a while and is obviously paying better returns, then that's something I'll absolutely look at. But, you know, banks are offering, you know, <laughs> we go back to here. This is the kind of interest rate you might get from a bank, 0.25%. And that's if you're lucky. It's probably more like 0.025%. So BlockFi are still outplaying them. And this is on Bitcoin, an asset that just continues to, you know, go to unbelievable new highs every couple of years. So I'm all right with that. You need to make up your own mind. All right, look, that's it for me. Again, we've got the weekend coming up, so I'd be very, very, you know, just careful that we aren't going to have a further retracement. And again, in the altcoin space, be super careful because if we do see a, a retracement from Bitcoin, again, maybe down to 28,000 or 24,000 or even 20,000, the altcoin positions are going to be monstered if that happens and again not saying that's what will happen it's just something that we need to keep in the back of our minds so for me i'm focusing on bitcoin and ethereum mainly not to say i don't you know have a dabble at you know some altcoins here and there but predominantly dollar cost averaging into bitcoin all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment and i'll see you next time